so this video is way overdue. Um, quite some time ago now, I, I had this uh, guitar go into the shop and they adjusted the nut and uh, kind of set it back up and got it playable. Um, it still doesn't have a string tree on it. And none of the strings are popping out of the nut. So I, I really like that and it turned out quite nicely. Been playing it for some time, uh, but the action is a little bit higher coming back from the shop than I liked. And now that it's been a few months, I'm probably gonna set it up again and try to lower that a little. And I'll walk through that process. Uh, so to do this, I'm gonna be using Fender's specs for a nine and a half inch radius uh, Stratocaster. I couldn't find anywhere on Fender's website or anything like that where they have a Jazzmaster specific guide, but I'll walk through what I'm gonna do at each step. And it's just following that procedure uh, essentially the same way. And I'm going to start by adjusting the neck relief. So we'll look at that first. So the first thing I'm gonna do with this uh, to set it up is to set the neck relief. That is adjusting the truss rod inside the neck to basically determine how bowed or straight the neck is. You want a little bit of neck relief or a little bit of bow to make sure that you don't get buzzing against the frets. Uh, I'm gonna need three things to do this. One of them is a four millimeter uh, hex key. This is the exact right size to fit into the nut and the truss rod. You have to be really careful that you have the right size or you can strip the nut out and damage the truss rod and make it harder to adjust. Um, this is a Wormuth neck, and this is the size they use, four millimeter for reference. Uh, I also have a capo, which I've attached at the first fret, and I'm going to use that to keep that fret depressed while I use my hand to depress the last fret. And then I will check between on the eighth fret with this feeler gauge. And what this is is a very thin gauge that I'm gonna slide underneath the string at the eighth fret right here, uh, basically to see if there's any contact and how much I need to adjust things. Uh, so I'll dive right in and start adjusting that and uh, show if I make any changes or if it looks pretty good the way that it is. Right, so Fender's spec is that there should be 0 0.01 inches, that's a 0.25 millimeter at the eighth fret if I depress the uh, bottom fret and have the first fret depressed. So I'm just going to take the gauge and slide it in at the eighth fret. And you can see that there's just a little bit of contact. Not really that much, um, but that's probably moving things just a little bit more than ideal. Just a little bit. And on the other side, it's kind of the same story. A little bit of contact there. So this probably needs to be bowed a little bit more. That means I want to loosen the truss rod. In other words, turn uh, counterclockwise. Clockwise would tighten. So what I'm gonna do is turn about just an eighth or quarter of a turn uh, counterclockwise and then back to tighten just a little bit. You wanna finish by tightening. This is pretty delicate and you have to be very careful not to over torque this. If you feel a ton of resistance, you should just stop. And uh, this is seated perfectly in the nut. I actually can tell it's fit in. So we're just going to loosen just a little bit. There we go. About an eighth of a turn I've just done. And now I'm going to come back just a little bit. Clockwise. And so now I've done about half an eighth of a turn. That's how slight that adjustment was. It was really barely touching the string. We'll check that again. Again, eighth fret. And that is just about perfect. I am now not touching this, or if I am, just barely feather touching it. I might actually just tighten this back just a little bit more now that it's broken loose and tightening. There we go, just a little bit more. And that's just about perfect. So the relief on the neck is now set up correctly. We have 0 0.01 inches at the eighth fret. Uh, I'm going to move on now to actually set the uh, action of the guitar in terms of height by adjusting the bridge. So next up, I'll be adjusting the height of the bridge to set the action. Uh, to measure this, I'm just going to be using this ruler, which I'm going to put at the 17th fret, which is right here, I believe. And uh, because this bridge can be adjusted on either side, I'm going to be sighting this both on the high E string and on the low E string separately. I'll probably only film one. Uh, to adjust the bridge, the way that this works is that there are these thimbles that go into the body, and at the bottom of them, sticking through the bridge, is a screw that kind of pushes down and gets pushed into the bottom of these thimbles and balances. Um, to adjust it, what you need is a 0 .05 inch uh, Allen key, and that's really, really small. It's in inches this time. This is actually the smallest Allen key that I own 
I almost had to go buy one just to be able to adjust this. And you'll put this down into these holes in the bridge posts and then get them locked in. And if I turn counterclockwise, it's gonna back the screw up and the bridge will go down. And if I do clockwise, it'll raise the bridge up. So I'm just gonna really quickly sight and I'll kind of show you guys where it is. So hopefully this is a pretty good angle on the 17th fret. And to sight this in, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this ruler down on the 17th fret. Fender's specification says that it should be 4 64ths off of the uh, base side and then 3 64ths off of the treble side. So if I look at this, I am at about, I would say, 5 64ths at least, maybe 5.5 by looking at this. Might not be clear on the camera, but that means we do need to adjust this down just a little bit. The shot brought it back with action just a little bit out from where I want. So I'm going to go ahead and back this up just a little bit and... You probably can't see me, but I'm turning the bridge post now, just about a quarter of a turn uh, counterclockwise. So now we'll take another look. So 15, 17. We're still not quite there. Just keep turning it. I've probably gone about a half a turn in total, so pretty significant adjustment. And you can see that we've lowered down just a little bit on that side. And I think we're now just about at 4 64ths. Um, so I'm going to do the other side the exact same way, uh, probably down a little bit lower, maybe 3 64ths or like 3 and a half. And then we'll be done setting the bridge height to fix the action. We'll move on to the intonation. Um, to do this, I have a tuner. Uh, you're going to want one that's pretty accurate so that you can get a very good measurement, preferably one that takes input straight from the guitar. I also have a very small Phillips head screwdriver. This is like a, like a jewelry type screw, screwdriver because the screws to adjust these saddles are very small. So the way that this works is that you're basically subtly adjusting the scale length on each string. I've always heard it explained basically that there are regions of the string that don't really vibrate very much. So you, you end up with the different sizes of string kind of having different dead zones and actually having different lengths. And uh, you're trying to avoid having a case where playing an open note at the end of the fretboard would be different than if you played a note up the fretboard. So what you're doing is you're going to get the guitar really, really well in tune and then play an open string. And I'm going to demonstrate with the D string since I think it's slightly out and the others are pretty close. But I've got an open string that's in tune. And then if I depress at the 12th fret, and you want to be really careful not to be like bending the string or anything. You want to just go straight down and play there you can see it's just a little bit flat. And actually, honestly, it's, it's really pretty close. But what I'm gonna do, just to demonstrate, is to adjust the scale length of this string just a little bit. And actually, if I turn this counterclockwise, this screw that I'm adjusting right now, this saddle will move forward just a little bit and shorten the scale length of that string, and it should make it go just a little bit sharper. And honestly, all these were already pretty good, so. This is more just for demonstration. I only turned it about a half a turn there, so it barely moved. But I'll just retune it just a little bit. And I might just want to make that go a little bit further. Another half turn, maybe. Quarter, more like. And you see now it's much closer. It's on. So pretty much all the other strings are already in. I've checked them. So that's how you do it. You just repeat that for every single string and make sure you keep tuning all the strings so that they're very in tune as you do it every time you make an adjustment. Next up, I've got the camera angle down low again so that we can sight on these pickups, and I'm going to be adjusting the pickup height. Uh, for this, I've got just a small Phillips head screwdriver and the same 64th of an inch graduated ruler. Um, this is a hard one to explain just because it's, it's pretty subjective. Um, you really want to adjust this by ear, and I already know that these are set pretty darn close, so this is really more for demonstration. But uh, according to Fender's website, vintage style single coil pickups, which that's the closest thing I can find to a Jazzmaster pickup on their site, 
uh, you ought to set to 5 64ths from the string to the uh, actual magnetic pull piece on the treble side and 6 64ths on the bass side. So if I just touch down this ruler to the pickup and then sight it, I would say that I'm already at just about exactly 6 64ths there. Um, if I wanted to adjust it, uh, the dog ears of the pickup cover, this plastic part, have screws in them. And underneath the pickup is a small like a piece of foam with springs through it. And if I tighten these in, it'll push the pickup down. And if I loosen them, the spring will push it back up. So I'm just going to really, really quickly check the other side as well, which is hard to do from this angle. And uh, that actually looks like it might be just a little bit on the... No, it's just about perfect also. That's about 464, 564. It's maybe a little bit uh, high. So I'm just going to put that in just a little bit. I'll just tighten that screw in half a turn. Tighten that screw in about half a turn and just sight it again. We may have gone just a tad too far, but that is a little bit better. Yeah, that's more like uh, five and a half. So I think I'll live with that for right now. Um, this is really subjective. You do it by ear. If there's a big volume difference between the two pickups, you're going to want to adjust it. Um, this one looks a little off kilter, so actually I'll probably adjust that before I keep going. But, uh, you know, it's whatever you like uh, and whatever it sounds best to you with. So the last thing I'll talk about is uh, the tremolo. To adjust the tremolo, you just take a screwdriver and this particular screw right in the middle of the trem will adjust the tension that is on a spring that actually sets how tight this is. Um, you'll see recommendations online like you have to adjust it until this is exactly vertical. I find that I just went by feel until I had this how I liked it and I'm actually not going to adjust it because I'm afraid to screw it up. But it's pretty simple. You just adjust this in, you know, maybe one turn forward, one turn back, and then see how you feel after retuning the strings to adjust the float. Unfortunately, there are a few problems with the tremolo still. I had intended in this video to show me taking this apart, and uh, I tried a bunch of different things to reduce the noise in the trem. I tightened the collet, I put like lubricant on the inside and reassembled it, and there's still a little bit of noise in this. You can hear it. It's much, much, much better than it was originally. However, a worse problem is, and this is developed, it wasn't there initially, but over the past few months of playing the guitar, if I depress it too far, like if I really dive, you'll hear this. There's this popping sound. And uh, looking into this online and, and taking the thing apart, the blade that makes contact with this top plate, like the, the portion that touches, is probably digging a little hole into the material where it kind of slides off suddenly and isn't smooth. Um, some people have tried filing and things like that to fix it. Honestly, you know, if it's a problem with the material wearing out that quickly, I don't think it's worth fixing. I'm, I'm probably just going to look to upgrade this and maybe show that in another video. But really, this is about as good as I could get this. And when you're playing, you know, this type of sound, which you can be pretty aggressive with, isn't that bad when you're playing through an amplifier. So this is done. Let's uh, examine and see if we need to make any fine tuning adjustments. Like sometimes you need to adjust the height of the bridge a little bit after playing this a little. So I'll plug it in and try that now. So here's the guitar uh, all set up. It feels really, really good. If I compare things like the volume between neck and bridge, I'll just get pretty nice even volume between those. The pickup height is set correctly. Uh, it's not choking out anywhere if I just kind of like I can bend anywhere on the neck on the high strings. Nothing's choking out like it was before I sent this into the shop and did all the adjustment. So I, I really think that this thing's pretty much good to go. Um, everything works. Travel is even not too bad even though I can't dive. So I guess this is all done. I hope this video helped anyone who's looking to set up a jazz master and uh, also I'll probably post a more detailed sound check type video on this since this is kind of like finally a complete guitar. <laughs> I've been really delaying getting around to filming this video and hopefully get the next one up a little bit faster and 
do something a little more exciting than just showing the setup. Anyway, uh, that's it for right now, so stay tuned.